It's a commonly known fact that adolescents go through a lot, both mentally and physically, during their teenage years. However, with the rates of depression and anxiety in young people on the rise, it's becoming clear that there is more to the situation than simply being a kid. Uh, howdy. Would you consider yourself to be a stressed person? Yes. I know hell yeah isn't the appropriate answer, but hell yeah. Um, do you notice stress and depression in your students? Yes, I do. Do you think you have experienced symptoms of depression? An example, lack of motivation, inability to focus, not finding activities enjoyable anymore, lack of sleep. Or being and diagnosed with depression. Sadness. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I try to be as low stress as possible, but I'm actually really super stressed right now. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that everybody has. It just like comes and goes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do think I'm pretty stressed on a regular basis. Yes, I have experienced depression. It's a really bummer. It's a big bummer. It's not fun. Most of the time, I'm pretty stress free, but that's because I try to get all my work done inside of my classes. If I can't do that, which was kind of a lot, I get pretty stressed pretty easily, and I feel like being stressed. Like makes me a bit more short-tempered and angry and yeah. It just kind of goes in periods where I feel like I get less enjoyment out of things yeah. that I would usually enjoy and sometimes I kind of have a tendency to isolate myself. I was clinically diagnosed with depression about three years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I, I'm pretty stressed. But why is this happening? According to a recent article from Time Magazine, there may be several different factors that are contributing to the difficulties that young people are facing. These include how this most recent generation is the post-9-11 generation, raised in an era of economic and national insecurity. They've never known a time when terrorism and school shootings weren't the norm. They grew up watching their parents weather a severe recession and, perhaps most importantly, they hit puberty at a time when technology and social media were transforming society. Not only does the environment that young people are growing up in place a lot of pressure on the minds of growing adolescents, but the rise of technology may play a large role in causing stress, anxiety, and depression in teens. Um, school? I'm sure we used to that. Because of school and theater and just family stuff. My grades and my parents. And I contribute that mostly to school. <gasps> school and basketball and my family. I am a big procrastinator and I put off a lot of my work and sometimes my friends. I also have a lot of responsibilities at home. Just like social relationships. Because I don't do homework on game days, yeah. which yeah. kind of hurts me sometimes and then yeah. I get really stressed about it. Because I have a lot of pressure from my parents to do well and my sister did really well in school. so It's hard to fit in a social life sometimes. However, there are healthy methods that allow young people to cope with their issues. Um, what do you think is a healthy way to deal with stress? Not the way I do it. <laughs> I don't know. If you figure it out, tell me. What do you think is the biggest contributor to teen stress? Uh, too much workload. Usually I listen to music, prioritize things. And I like to draw and paint or do theater. It's really good with helping me de-stress, but it's also super stressful. I don't really deal with it. I'm not very healthy when it comes to dealing with stress. I stress about it. Uh -huh. I stress about my stress. I don't know, I want to say napping, but that, I don't think yeah. that's just depression in general. Probably getting more sleep and things like that. You kind of somehow find some time where you kind of get away from school and kind of get your mind off of, off of it and do something fun and something that you enjoy. I wallow for a little while in my own sadness and then sometimes I try to cheer myself up. Most of the times I just kind of chill and let myself be sad until I'm not sad anymore or, or I hang out with my friends and I'll be like, man, I'm in a bad mood and I'm sad and no one's going to make me happy, but then my friends will always make me smile, so. Aww. <laughs> to channel your stress into something productive, probably talking to someone about it and like finding a hobby. Then one day I buckle down and I just like get everything done. Um, I ignore it. Like try to get rid of it in like a creative way. Hang out with my pets. Don't. I usually just go to sleep. <laughs> 
or I'll just like get real mad and do my makeup. <laughs> I usually play video games. I've had a counselor say like, if you stop like asking yourself how you are in the morning, like if you just wake up and continue with your life, because I've tried like just, just rolling with life. Um, it doesn't get rid of it completely. Being outside helps a lot. Sometimes I'll talk to my mom, but that just makes me more stressed out. <laughs> usually with like art or painting and stuff like that. I sleep a lot. I feel like the ways that I try to deal with it are pretty healthy. Not only does the environment that young people are growing up in place a lot of pressure on the minds of growing adolescents, but the rise of technology may play a large role in causing stress, anxiety, and depression in teens. Biologically, the body's natural response to change is stress. And in today's world, where we are constantly being exposed to new innovations and gadgets and improvements without a break or a chance to slow down and become fully adjusted, a lot of pressure is put on our subconscious that can cause mental problems. Um, Snapchat is really just, just a huge, really bad thing for people. It's just like, hey, we all hung out without you. Want to see pictures? That was so fun. Because there's much more information out there you can know and gather and you can get it much quicker. Uh, from there, and so that could lead to increased stress. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think with technology, my stress is kind of elevated sometimes because I am constantly reminded of what's going on on around me, and I feel like I have a bunch of obligations to stuff that's outside of me. Um, not really. Sometimes, but no. Yeah, I actually had technology up until a couple weeks ago because it stressed me out too much and I think it kind of sets unrealistic expectations for how you're supposed to look and be. So I deleted it and I've been feeling a lot better but there is definitely still pressure to be on social media. I try to distract myself with things like Snapchat and Facebook and just Netflix in general. Does that end up making it worse? Usually because I will just like let it build up, you know, and not address, not ever address it. Okay. Uh, have you ever attended counseling? If so, to what extent did it help you? Um, I did, but I didn't really find it helpful. Uh, I haven't. They were supposed to. I was supposed to, but that never happened. So <laughs> here we are. Um, I think counseling's super great outlet um, for a lot of people who don't necessarily know what to do. Um, it kind of serves as like a starting point, but I think that counseling for me helped to a certain extent because it gave me the tools that I needed to help deal with my stress and my depression, but it couldn't do the work for me, so you have to, there's, mm -hmm. you do have to do a certain amount of work to get better. I've tried going to like a counselor, kind of helps, not really. Uh, I've never tried counseling freaked me out and it was just like a stranger that I was talking to yeah. too. I attend counseling like once a month and it's more of like a spiritual counseling. It helps. I think it's good. Do you think that if there wasn't such a strong stigma surrounding mental health um, and it was more of an open conversation, our generation would have less issues with it? part of why it's such a big issue. I think it's like kind of weird to talk about it with your friends and stuff. Because people, especially our parents, I think have grown up not talking about their feelings. Do you think your generation dealt with different levels of stress and depression than ours in your teen years? Uh, yeah, it wasn't talked about much during my generation. And so um, it was something more that you hit. And so because they never learned how to talk about their feelings or deal with them in a super healthy way, um, they're not, they don't have the tools to pass on to us, yeah. and so I feel like we, especially as teenagers, we feel like we can't talk to people without being labeled as an attention seeker or uh, stupid or silly or something like that. I think it's good that we're actually now talking about it. Um, I also think it's good that a lot of states are uh, coming up with ways to kind of deal with it um, as well. I think, I think those are all steps in the right direction. As you can see, there are different ways to learn to deal with the mental and emotional strain that comes with being a young person in this day and age, but as a whole, we need to address the underlying causes of this phenomenon in our societies and learn how to change things before we start handing out the antidepressants. It is also incredibly important to remember that if you suffer from depression or anxiety, that you are not alone and there will always be help available to you. Maybe I just care too much about... Ow! Ow.
Ouch. <laughs> it hurts, man. It hurts to be stressed. It hurts. <laughs>